Happy Friday to all. Welcome to Coffee Break with Christine. We will just wait one moment as Jess joins us today. I hope you all had a great week. And here she comes. Hello. Hi. I hope we don't have any technical difficulties. I know (laughs) that happens sometimes. Yeah. 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 How are Uh, you? Good. Thanks for getting up so early in the morning. (laughs) You're over there on Pacific time. So yeah. Yeah. It's 9 a.m. here. I know it's around noon for you, right? Yeah. So just get my day started. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I'm ready. I'm getting ready to go out right after we're done for uh, to celebrate three years with my partner for lunch. Oh, so okay, congrats. Yeah, you're Thanks. in Miami, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, I want to go there so bad. I I've never been to Florida, but I've been. Oh really? Yeah. D- it's funny, doors like, are open for you. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but like I've been to like Europe, tons of places. Like we've talked, and then yes. people are like, but. You, You've never been to Florida or to like, I don't know, other place in the States? I'm like, no. (laughs) (laughs) Well, considering the current climate, I'm ready to to leave the country anyway. (laughs) Yeah, same, um, same. (laughs) But yeah, why don't you tell everybody who you are and um, what you do, what your business is, and a little bit about your journey to entrepreneurship. Yeah, of course. So my Mm -hmm. name is Jessica, (laughs) and (laughs) I am the co-founder, actually. I have my other founders, her name's Madeline. Um, but I'm the co-founder of an Instagram engagement agency called Authentic Connection Media. So what we do with that agency is we basically help entrepreneurs get their message in front of more people and of course, more income and impact, right? So how that works, I mean, I'm sure everyone on here, you guys are on Instagram, right? Obviously. <laughs> so you know how there's all these bots out there and like just disingenuine engagement. So what oh. we do is 100% human powered. And we work with we work with six figures entrepreneurs that are you know already having they already have a big platform they already have a lot of you know clients but they really need more of a helping hand in, to get their message in front of even more people and of course you know be able to help them because um, basically Instagram is like its own kind of how do I say it like um, we create our own little CRM within Instagram so that customer mm. relationship management and we're able we just keep track of all the people and create connections with them, create, um, you know, conversations with other people through their, um, through their account. So we help oh, wow. them basically, yeah, get, get more leads, close more sales, get in front of more people and all of that. So that started in March, actually. So I know we've been, you've been following me for, for quite a while. So yeah. my journey started in 2018. Same. Uh, yeah, 2018. Oh, you I think we right? were both starting, I was getting ready to move from Boston and open start yeah I think we were doing it at about the same time but you were already traveling right yeah so I started I quit my corporate job February 2018 and then um so I was I'm in San Diego now um I was living Mm -hmm. in LA and I like pretty much the whole sold my car sold everything kind of a deal Mm -hmm. yeah came back home and then I was like okay well I'm starting this business and I'm just going to buy my one-way ticket to Barcelona because if I don't do it now, then I'm going to check it out. <laughs> yeah. So I, yeah, <laughs> I love it. That's like once we can start traveling, I'm like, I want to go back to Spain because I miss it so much. Oh, me too. Um, yeah. Oh, well, you um, you always go over there, right, Sevilla? Yeah. yeah, for the community there. I'll share a little bit about that after. But yeah, we started in January this year and then everything happened. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I feel like so many people I've talked to, they're like, yeah, I was doing and that's how I feel. So I'm like 2020 was like, I was doing so much, you know, January, mm-hmm. February, March, and then it's just like, oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But I started traveling in um, July of 2018. And okay. so I started with a web design business. So that's kind of how like, I, I, I mean, I have a, a degree in marketing and like, during college, I had like internships and social media. So I've like been in the online space, but I didn't, I had never started my own business until 2018, which is a total other ball. I was going to say, which is completely different from like having a degree because they don't teach you how to run a business really in college. <laughs> At all. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you read books about like the four piece product price 
what was the other ones? I don't even know. <laughs> but it's like not the same thing, right? So I started um, my web design business and kind of was traveling and running that at the same time. And it was kind of, I, I kind of got burned out, to be honest, um, trying to do both because I was kind of, I didn't do it. I didn't travel in a way where I was like, oh, I'm going to be here for like three months, which now I know that's, you know, once I start doing that again, that's what I'm going to do. Just be somewhere, call it home. But I mm -hmm. was like, pretty much hopping around um, different country every week, yeah. <laughs> every other day kind of a thing sometimes. Um, yeah, that can get exhausting. I've been there yeah. too. It's hard because you're like learning as you go. So you, you don't really know what works for you till you try. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you're learning about traveling and you're learning about running a business at the right. same time, right? So you're like, ah. So that happened. And I basically, uh, I was supposed to go travel for a year and I kind of cut it short. Uh, so I remember I that. Travel. Yeah. I was just like, you know what? I was in Bali and um, I was like, I had been dreaming about being in Bali. But at the point that I was in Bali, I was like, I don't even want to be here right now. Like, Aww. I'm just burned out. So yeah, I came home. I actually didn't tell anyone. And I just came home and like showed up at my house, which was kind of fun. <laughs> I remember I messaged you and you were like, oh, I'm back in California. And I was like, oh, like I was just really surprised. But I think yeah. one thing that people forget is like, because it's so easy is with social media, like you show everyone you're working and you're traveling and everyone's like, oh my God, I want that life. And I think you were actually one of the first people that I reached out to when I was doing my research. Like I was still working at Harvard and trying to figure out if I should leave my job and what to do. And and I was trying to network with people who were already doing it. And it, cause I was like, if, and if they can do it, like I can do it, you know, but yeah. I think people forget like the mental aspect of both running a business and also traveling. It's stressful. Mm -hmm. And you, especially when you're new, you know, it's not like you had the business up and running for years yeah. and you were like, so the mental aspect definitely wears and tears on you and you can have travel experiences that might not be so pleasant sometimes. So you just never know. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I feel like, you know, those whole pictures where you're at the beach with your laptop, like, I think I tried mm -hmm. that once and like my laptop got all sandy and you <laughs> yeah. couldn't see because of the glare of the sun. And yes. I'm like, uh, this is not, <laughs> or the Wi-Fi fails. Right. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I don't know if I told you, or you probably saw, um, I got my laptop. So I had before the trip, I had bought a like brand new MacBook Pro, like the really nice, nice touch bar one, and a brand new like DSLR because I was like, you know, I'm gonna my be ready to be a digital nomad. And I was in Poland, um, and yeah, so it was the first time I had left my stuff in my locker because you get lockers because um, I was traveling by myself and on a lower budget <laughs> at the time. Mm -hmm. So I stayed in a hostel and I left my things in my locker, and yeah, I came back and they had stolen my laptop and camera and like like I said I was working I had clients oh. so I was like no <laughs> I remember so, you messaged me about it and you also were like more concerned because you had to work and like all your work was there and it yeah. was the locker locked yeah yeah it was locked oh wow yeah so I, I mean I I don't know but basically some friends from Europe they're like pulling like I mean I don't want to like stereotype but they told me pull and that happens a lot there really known for that I was like I had no idea uh, <laughs> so they're like it honestly probably was still not work there they, that's what they said um because yeah I mean there was no like broken like nothing like it was like a key one of the key ones and stuff uh, like that so yeah that's horrible yeah. so that happened but I got lucky because I was supposed to go to Madrid like three days later to meet up with a friend um and his parents were going to come visit him from san diego so my parents went to buy me a laptop at best buy oh. dropped it off at his house and then i had a computer like three days later so oh, i got wow. lucky because i was like if you try to ship one from the u.s over there you have to pay for like fees import um, tax like, think, yeah import tax i think yeah. it was like an extra four hundred dollars oh my gosh or something like that yeah yeah so i got lucky like they literally like Three, I just went with like three days without a laptop. <laughs> so do you think that's what started like your, I would say like s how your mental state started to go down? Like when your stuff got stolen, was that part of you wanting to go home or? No, I don't think so. I think it, I actually took it like, I, I mean, of course I was upset, but I, yeah. I think I took it in a way where it was like, okay, you know what? Like things happen. Like I didn't get hurt or like, you know, I didn't, True. Get, you know, someone stopped me at gunpoint or anything like that I didn't have any emotional trauma in that way so yeah I think it was just definitely like a hiccup but um I think mostly things started like like December when I was starting to travel like faster 
Mm. I think when I started to travel like a little faster, um, where was I? I was in Thailand or also just like, you know, months, six, seven, six months had passed already. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, oh, I think I'm starting to get a little homesick. Because uh, I had been gone, the most I had been gone from home was six months because I studied abroad when I was um, in 2015 mm -hmm. in Madrid. So mm -hmm. you know, we love Spain here, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I, I was there for uh, six months. Yeah. So mm -hmm. this, so I guess I think maybe like the six month market, I was like, oh, this is the longest I've ever been from home. Um, mm -hmm. Coupled with like, yeah, just like, you know, there's months where, um, clients weren't necessarily like flowing in the whole mm -hmm. time because like we kind of mentioned or I don't know if I totally mentioned it but like I basically s decided to quit my job without having any clients I just saved up like a ton of money and um I saved up for like 10 months I think it was and mm -hmm. um I I was like oh you know like everything you know because people market and they're like oh yeah be full-time in your business in like two months or whatever so I was like okay I'll quit my job and then like in two months I'll be like making the same as my corporate like I literally thought that <laughs> when, I, when I quit back then so uh, I think it was definitely like like trying to run a business like starting it wasn't like I had an established like oh I've had this business for you know a year or two years and like mm -hmm. I have a consistent flow of clients and I have systems and processes it was very much like I'm literally just starting this business from scratch so I think mm -hmm. um that's a big part of it like I would definitely not advise I mean some people do it in a way where they're like for example they move to Bali but then they just stay there and they like start their business kind of a thing yeah but the way I did it was like oh let me go to Barcelona now Croatia and Ireland and, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and so it was very like I didn't have too much time to focus. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that like drained me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I, so I would advise like if you're going to travel and hop around, like definitely have systems in place, have a, be in a place where you're more established mm -hmm. and can do that because it's going to drain you mentally for sure. Um, yeah. And if you do want to do it, then do it in a way where you're like, okay, I'm going to move here, stay here for three, four months and like, you know, do weekend outing like go somewhere mm -hmm. on the weekend and stuff but have a place yeah, that you can call home basically yeah because you also can have culture shock which is like that emotional aspect again you don't know what to expect so if you're jumping around to a new country like every week or every couple of weeks and it's like you don't yeah. even know how you're gonna feel there or what how they treat you or like there's so many factors that go into it so i'm sure now if you or when you start out again um it'll be a completely different experience and a different journey. Um, yeah. I'm curious, what was your, or what is your favorite? I think I know the answer. What, what is your favorite place that you traveled to or <laughs> during that time? <laughs> yeah, it's so hard. It's, it's such it a hard, hard. question. I'm sure you know. Cause I, so I'd say like in terms of like where I'd want to live and I just love Spain as in like the culture. I mean, Spain is beautiful, but I feel like I've seen more, beautiful like scenery than Spain just mm -hmm. like Thailand like the islands like that is mm. beautiful but I think Spain is just beautiful in the sense of like the culture the language the lifestyle mm -hmm. um, so I'd like love Spain for that but if we're talking more like oh it's like the most beautiful scenery you've seen or sunset or something like that it, I think it'd be a tie between like Santorini um mm. and uh like the islands like um Kopiti, I think it's called in Thailand so I'd say those. Um, okay. Have you been to Thailand before? I haven't been to Asia yet. I've been to okay. like Australia, New Zealand, and Fiji, but mm -hmm. I didn't make it to Asia yet. So I haven't, no, I haven't seen that part. That's the one area that I need to yes. head over to. It's so far from the East Coast too, from, yeah. you know, so. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I'm in like California too. So it took me like 24 hours to come back from Bali. Mm -hmm here oh like, my gosh I mean, I have a layover, but <laughs> yeah <still. laughs> it's a long um you speak mm -hmm. spanish fluently correct yes yeah uh, i should have you well once we get back to um we have workshops for femprendedoras the spanish community that i run in uh -huh. sevilla um we should have you come over and do a workshop in Spanish. That would be yeah. amazing. I will say, so I'm fluent. Spanish is my first language. Um, yeah. I will say when it comes to business, it's just a whole total ball game. It like, is. Ball game. I'm like, uh, uh, and I just start speaking in like little words because in Spanish, you know, like technical or like more like kind of like jargon. This is right. Jargon. Yeah. It, it gets I kind agree. Of complicated. <laughs> I so agree. I definitely would love to do it, but I will say I probably will do some little Spanish there. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, <laughs> I it was it's been a learning curve for me. It's my second language, so trust me, I was so nervous my first presentation that I gave in January and. Um, but it gets easier and the people are understanding, like they all know I'm American and you know, they're, they're, as long as they're learning then they're happy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. I'd love to do an in-person one too. And oh, this mm -hmm. is over. I've never been to Sevilla. So I've been to Spain oh. like three times and I've never made it down. So I went to Cadiz, but not Sevilla. Okay. Cordoba, okay. On my list. Oh yeah, it's a whole different world than Madrid and Barcelona. So definitely, yeah, I can imagine you can come and stay with me, and then, awesome. <laughs> yeah. So so going back to um, just handling, you know, the ups and downs can you, of entrepreneurship. Can you share a little bit about how you did that? Um, kind of like what's the most difficult part you think for being an entrepreneur, and how you handle the ups and downs. Yeah, so I'd say the most difficult part would probably be, and that's something I'm, I've gotten way better at, but just like mm -hmm. honoring the stage that you're in, because it's so easy, obviously, again, we're all on Instagram right here, because if you're watching this, you are on Instagram, and it's so easy to like scroll and see people that started their business like a minute ago, and they're already like at 10k months, or like, you know, a million dollars or whatever. It's just like that, I think that's been um, hard and again, I have gotten way better at this, but I know mm -hmm. at the beginning, it was really like just a lot of comparison. Um, and so I think just being okay with where you're at and mm. you know, some people might have started That's a good business, one. you know, maybe a month or two months ago, but you don't know, like maybe they started their first business really in reality, like two years ago and they did it for a year and not failed. And that learned so much mm -hmm. that they took into this. So you don't know the story behind it. Um, you know, so like, for example, this agency, we just started it in March, um, but we're, you know, already hiring our, first, we already hired our first team member and we're booked out. So it's been going really well, but like I had, you know, we both, so my co-founder and I, we have other businesses and we've tried things and failed and learned. So, you know, maybe you look at this agency and you're like, oh, they just started in March and they're like booked out and doing well, but it's just like, well, yeah, but they started these two ladies have another business where they have been going at it for two years and have learned so much. So it's just like mm -hmm. being, um, being like, not, don't be hard on yourself or like, not it's hard. being there yet or like comparing, comparing yourself to other people because you really never know <laughs> what, True. Uh, you know, what they went through to get there or, you know, even also like people that share like, oh, yeah, I made like, you know, whatever amount, but it's just like, oh, well, how much of that was profit? So you just really never know whether it's like good or bad, like, you know, mm -hmm. just, just also take that as an opportunity to see like, oh, this is what's possible for me. Um, also not, not, I'm not saying like, oh, just like disregard people. It's like, cool, like, they got there, I will get there. And this is what's possible for me without mm -hmm. the, I guess I'd say just like that perspective shift. Yeah. I'm from Barcelona. Sorry, I'm just. Really yeah, yeah. Comments. Someone's. <laughs> Hello, hola. Jana, nos en, nos encanta tu país. <laughs> sí, yo quiero regresar a Barcelona o Madrid o los dos. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, no two people's journey are the same. You know, you could run yeah. and start the exact same business at the exact same time. And it just depends on your clients and your experience. And hola. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, everyone's journey is different. And I love what you said about, um, you know, just accepting where you are and um, using the failures as a learning experience. Like, you yeah. know, it's, it's easy to say, like, why me when something goes wrong instead of like, just why? Like, why is this happening? What, what do I need to take from this? What do I need to learn? You know, where can I improve and get better? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I was actually talking to a friend um, about this a couple of days ago. And she was mentioning that her mentor was saying that kind of like think about it as if you're like, putting together a cake and every experience is a, an ingredient that you need. Mm. So everything that you go through, it's like you're gonna need it in order to finish the cake or you know, so mm -hmm. I love that because it's like, you know, my web design business, I did it and I found that I definitely wasn't in alignment with what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. But like I was able to take that like being in the online world, I learned so much about how to start a business, you know, how to be how to show up for an audience, how to build an audience So like I could, I, even though I didn't just end up doing web design, like I could take those ingredients and put it into like 
the next thing I want to create kind of a thing mm -hmm. and you know with my with this authentic connection media um, our Instagram agency like I was able to build a website we didn't have to pay anyone so okay, exactly cool. <laughs> yeah yeah so it worked out it's so funny because I've always struggled at like calling myself a creative person and like the whole technical thing I, I haven't been horrible but it's just not always my my best area but I I love Squarespace. I don't know which platform you usually use, but I yeah. did my own. I did the Femprendedoras. I did a friend's and she paid me for it. So like, it's just funny that I never, ever, ever thought that I could create a website and here I've created three. And like, yeah. it's just, you know, you never know till you try something. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's important too to be open to different ideas and different um, experiences because you never know what you could like. Yeah, yeah. I think also, like, we're also concerned with, well, most, for the most part, I think most people are, so, we're also concerned, like, finding our, like, passion or what's, like, mm -hmm. the thing we love. And I think so much of my life, <laughs> I've been concerned on, like, what's in alignment with me? What what do I love? Like, mm -hmm. that versus just, like, hey, like, let me, because I, I feel like I overthink that so much. It's like, oh, does this feel right? Does this feel right? Or do I more like do I think this is gonna feel right without actually doing it and being like oh this does feel right now that I'm doing it or this mm -hmm. doesn't so like I think it's also like passion something that we think we're gonna find by like thinking about it and I think it's more like just go ahead and do it and like passion the passion or the yeah the drive for it will come if it's meant to be and if it's not like at least you tried it right versus overthinking about I think I'm gonna like it I think I'm not <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That's, that's so funny you say that because I, um, when I was leaving my job to quit, I was like, Oh, I'm going to be a virtual assistant because I had a lot of administrative skills and like project management. And I was like, Oh, well, I'm, I think I'm going to love it because I'm going to be able to travel, but I wasn't yeah. loving what I was doing. <laughs> so that's when I pivoted and like started the coaching, um, you know, studying to be a life coach and all of that. And getting certified so yeah. it's it's funny when you think you know what's best for you and you think you know what you want and then all of a sudden you find yourself changing completely and and it's okay like it's okay it's all part of the process and learning exactly exactly yeah but you yeah at least like you did it you weren't like oh I think but maybe not like you went ahead and did it and like that's that, that's I'm in a similar like boat to you because when I started web design funny story I had never actually built a website before <laughs> so oh my like, gosh oh. <laughs> yeah so I came across this um course that uh -huh. their marketing like their <clears throat> niche and their uh, I'm sorry their um, ideal clients was basically me people that millennials that wanted to travel so like they had this course where it was either you become a social media manager or a web designer and like mm -hmm. I had done social media management but I didn't necessarily like so much of like I didn't like the one being the one posting. I like the strategy behind it. But so I was like, oh, mm -hmm. I'll just be a web designer. So because I could travel the world. So it was just like you just saw. So I started doing it. Oh, wait. Oh, you're back. Sorry. Kind of froze. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> yeah. So like what you said, it's like, oh, I'll be a VA because. I can travel, but then you forget that, like, you have to do the work. <laughs> you can't right. just like, to the traveling, right? <laughs> yeah. So it's, Absolutely. yeah, it's funny how that works. You're like, yeah, I, I think I want to enjoy what I'm doing, too. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Jana or Jana, I'm not sure how she says it, but she, so Jana, tell us what WOOP stands for. She said she started to practice it. I'm curious what that stands for. Um, um so we're almost out of time, actually, but um, if you could share, I know we've been talking about all the lessons we've learned and all the mistakes we've made, but um, if you could share one piece of advice for someone who's just starting out on their journey, um, what would that be? Yeah, so I'd say, you know, if you're looking to become an entrepreneur and such, my biggest piece of advice, uh, which I did not follow the first, you know, the first year and a half of my business was... <laughs> Focusing, you know, once obviously this is like once you know what you want to do. So this advice is not necessarily to like how to find what you want to do, but more like, okay, you have a business that you want to start and such. So I'd say really focusing on, and this is like unsexy advice, I guess, um, but focusing on the things that are going to bring you revenue, right? Because mm. when I first started, I literally got, I was like, I need business cards. Like, that's the first thing I need. Yeah. Like, it's not <laughs> the first thing you need. You not need business cards. So when you, you know, because at the end of the day, 
a business needs to make money, right? If you want to travel and you want to do all these things, like you need to have clients. So I'd say focus on the things that are going to bring you revenue, which is, you know, building relationships, having conversations with people, not spending hours, because I would do this like, oh, I think this font doesn't go well with this. Let me spend yeah. four hours finding the right font. So yeah. we can get stuck in that loop mm -hmm. because it feels comfortable, it feels safe, or like creating a ton of blogs. I literally would, you know, my whole day would be like four hours, five hours of writing blogs, which oh, I'm wow. not saying, um, you know, creating a blog and like, you know, there's a lot of uh, opportunities there too because you can find you know be found on google and blah blah but just like when you're really starting like what you really need is you need clients right <laughs> so right focus on on those things and get uncomfortable put as i say which can there. be uncomfortable <laughs> but yeah. it's necessary mm -hmm. yeah it's definitely necessary so like a logo and like even though i was a web designer <laughs> before like i wouldn't if, if you're just starting out like a website is not the first thing you need. Absolutely not. It's like you need to get your your name out there. You need to start having conversations with people, see how you can potentially help them. Right? Like I, mm -hmm. I think um, people are afraid to do that because again, it's it's uncomfortable. It's it's scary. Um, you're running the risk of rejection. Where whereas mm -hmm. when you're tweaking your website for the hundredth time, like there's no one that can reject you there. Right. Right. <laughs> so that is I, that is I'd so say, true doing that and which is basically what you know kind of correlates to what we do with our agency like we start relationships with people we have conversations and because people you know obviously like don't do it in a way where like if someone's like not obviously they don't need your help they have another coach or they like mm -hmm. you know they're not you can tell like just having emotional intelligence right when someone wants to talk to you when someone doesn't right and just mm -hmm. communicating people in a way that they want to be communicated and seeing mm -hmm. is there a place for me to help them um if not you know it's fine i can still deliver value in other sense you know people follow you on instagram whatever like you're giving value regardless but like do they need your help beyond that yes or no um so yeah mm -hmm. that'd be my advice focus on those generating uh, revenue generating activities yeah i mean relationships are super important and you just never know like who you're gonna meet or run into yeah. or who they know you know you meet them and then it's like who do they know that can help you and I think exactly. sometimes when people say, think of networking, they're like, oh, here's my business card and this is my service. But it's actually focusing on building those genuine relationships. And yeah. you just you just never know. So Yeah, exactly. Like you said, um, you might end up in a podcast. Like maybe it's, mm -hmm. it's not like, and again, it's not like going with the intention, like I need to sell this person. Exactly. Like, they can read you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they're like that person's hungry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, seriously. So it's like going with the intention of like, how can I provide value for them? And mm -hmm. you know, I think when you hold that energy and come have that intention, like that's when things work out for the best. And like you said, you never know whether it's like, hey, I you know my past client is actually looking for what you have, or like you know I mm -hmm. have a podcast and I love for you to call on it. So it's you you never know what you know what that's going to turn. And I know. I love that we're in a live because I think that's how we kind of started just connecting like over DMs and yeah. we're in a live and now I'm going to go to Sevilla and visit you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was like, oh, she's in Spain. I'm going to go talk to her. <laughs> she's in yeah. Spain and she's working and traveling. So I was like, okay, I'm going to say hi to her. <laughs> yeah. And people are receptive. Like I was like, yeah, oh, yeah. I, I mean, of course I was like really happy when you reached out. Like most people aren't going to be like, why are you talking to me? Like, Maybe right. you'll get one person that's like, hey, I'm really busy. I can't, don't have time to talk. So yeah. it's like, cool. Okay. Like, bye. It's On fine. to the next one. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> so we have to go in a minute, but I just wanted to also tell you that I love the emails that you send. I'm actually usually not a huge email person and I'm actually learning more about email marketing now um, as we speak, but your emails are so, you give so much value and they're short, which I love. <laughs> so like I hate the emails where people are like blah 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 you know and it's like yeah. yours are um insightful helpful short and get you know get to the point so yeah. keep sending those and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. and my last question is what's your favorite hot drink are you a yeah. cafe con leche girl or I ask everybody this no <clears throat> chai lattes <laughs> oh wow okay <laughs> yeah I know I'm like people laugh at me they're like you're the most so i'm mexican but i i don't so i'm not vegetarian but i'm pescatarian so i don't eat meat and okay. like oh my god like you're the 
because I don't like like um like tamales I don't like like horchata I don't like all these things that people like make fun of me or like cafe con leche you know? <laughs> I, don't, I don't really drink coffee to be honest so oh wow yeah, chai latte is my <laughs> Those okay <laughs> <laughs> hey everyone has their own special um yeah. yeah jana thanks for joining us and feel free to connect with us we love meeting new people especially in spain <laughs> yeah yeah let me know if you have any questions my dms are open for yeah so any tell, thing, whatever <laughs> awesome um so tell everyone where they can find you your website yeah. and your instagrams and such yeah yeah so this instagram i'm not as active as i used to be but this instagram um you can dm me here or also in my bio where you'll see it says co-founder of uh, authentic connection media so that is my um instagram agency's business so um you can connect well mostly if you want to talk to me there here but <laughs> my co-founder is someone that handles the dms on that other one so gotcha be her um but for me it'd be here but if you want to follow my agency it's authentic connection media Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. Happy Friday. Um, yes. Stay safe and healthy. And I look forward to meeting you in Sevilla, if not before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for thinking of me when you reached out. I was like, of, yes, course. of course, I'll do it. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, I'm so glad we got to do it. So I yeah. this will be saved on my <clears throat> IGTV. And um, I'll yeah. also send you a YouTube link with it later. Awesome. Awesome. All righty. Well, have a great so weekend. Have a good lunch for your anniversary. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right. Have a good day. Bye.